All right, tonight is Halloween, if you couldn't guess. And you might be asking yourself how that house in the corner that so obviously has all the time in the world was able to make that haunted mansion spew smoke or reflect ghosts at you or something. Joining us to take the fun out of it all with science is Rhett Elaine from Wired. How's it going, Rhett? Good. Or actually, I'm here to put the fun in. All right, excellent. <laughs> yes. More science. <laughs> exactly. Let's pick this all apart. So you have a piece uh, on Wired. It's like a Wired twofer day. We have two guests from Wired today. I love it. Uh, in your piece, you detailed four common tricks that we see all the time, usually when you're, you're trick-or-treating in that house. They just, they've got their stuff together. They know how to do it. Uh, let's pick these things apart. First is the easy one, the dry ice fog. I, I feel like this is the one of the four that I could actually do. What exactly is happening here when you, when you combine these two uh, dry ice and water? Okay, so dry ice is super cold, um, and that's it. And, and also, it, it, <laughs> when you put it in water, uh, it it turns into dry uh, dry ice goes straight to a gas. So it turns into a very very cold gas, and that cools down the air. There's water in the air that condenses, and boom, there you get a cloud. So so what you're seeing with that white stuff, that's really just water vapor. Um, it's super simple to do. Uh, it's fun. Uh, carbon dioxide, I mean, dry ice is just fun to play with. So you can put it in the water and it makes that cool stuff. It's not dangerous because it's just carbon dioxide. So Right. Will it burn your hand if you touch it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. It's not, <laughs> it's not safe. Yeah, don't touch it because um, it's so cold. It's essentially burns your hand. Yeah. Uh, but you can do the same thing with liquid nitrogen if you can get that. But uh, that's actually what I have in that blog post. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find dry ice, so I use liquid nitrogen. We get our but, dry uh, ice at the grocery store. Yeah, you can um, get it at the grocery store. Yeah, yeah and Love it's uh, it's very cold. Also, um, if you have small children that like to do experiments, to have them not put it in things that will explode. Because if you put yeah. it in something and then let it just fill it, it just... But and if you have bigger kids that want to do experiments, they want to make things exactly. explode. Right. <laughs> yeah. At a certain point, you cross still, that line, you're like, yeah, yeah you never go. know how those things are going to blow up. So <laughs> I, would, I, I would say don't. Okay, well... <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, next, how how do you kind of tackle the lightning effects if, without actually dying? Let's say um, this is the one that kind well, of scares me a little bit. When, when it becomes winter, you know, you just shuffle your uh, socked feet across the carpet and and zap someone with your finger. It's the exact same thing. I mean, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, so you, it builds up a change in potential. Uh, free charges in the air accelerate, and then when they accelerate, they knock other uh, electrons free, and they and it, it's an avalanche. You get more and more electrons getting free, um, and these electrons, when they recombine, they they make light. But the cool thing, the very cool thing, is that you need one free electron to start with, and most of those, most of the time, those free electrons come from cosmic rays. So if you didn't have, if you had no uh, free ions in the air, you wouldn't have sparks. Um, and and we get those from from cosmic radiation. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, now this next one's really cool. I've heard about this before, and I know that I've seen it in like haunted houses. I think it's it's a commonly employed trick called Pepper's Ghost. Um, how exactly is this executed? It m makes you think you're seeing a ghost, basically. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the most famous case of this, if you've been in the haunted mansion at Disney World or Disneyland. Uh, they do this with a with great effect, and I mean, it looks real. But it's essentially just a piece of glass. That's all it is. It's glass, and you know, if you look into a house at night, uh, which I, you should say, why are you doing that? But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if it's a bright house, it, then you can see in, but they can't see you, uh, and it, it's because the light reflects off, and they see the reflection more than they see through it. So. Glass both transmits and reflects light. And so if you put a clever geometry in there, then you can get the reflected, quote, ghost to appear next to a human. And, and that's a great effect. It works really well. They use this. They can use this in plays and movies. You can make, uh, and like I said, in the, the Disney World uh, Haunted Mansion things, it works too. Mm -hmm. So, What's the difference between a Pepper's ghost and a hologram? Yeah. Okay, so a hologram is formed from some completely different uh, means. And, and mainly the hologram, you, you can kind of rotate over a larger angle and still see it. This one, you have to be in the right spot. And if you move, if you're not in that right spot, then you don't see it. Yeah. So that's why it works really well for movies. It works well for a play where the audience are fixed and they can't move. Uh, but if you put this thing up, it's obvious it's not, it's not, a, real, it's not a real ghost. 
It's not a real ghost. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not, not like those that we always see, you know, floating around in sheets and stuff. Right. <laughs> those are the real thing. Uh, finally, tell us about uh, things that glow in the dark. I mean, other than, you know, light light sticks and or, you know, glow sticks and stuff like that. But Yeah, the glow like sticks the are different. Glow yeah, in the dark, though, these, if you think about it, it's the coolest thing ever. Um, the idea is it depends on quantum mechanics to really understand it. But it's not too hard. So if you take an atom and you excite the electron and it comes back down, you get light. But with glow in the dark, you excite it and it comes down at more than one step. And it turns out that one of those steps where it jumps down and gives off light is in a forbidden transition. So it takes a long time. So you, you shine light on this material, the electrons get excited, and then as they drop back down, they give off light. Uh, and that's why it glows in the dark. Now, the, the, the image you showed is if you, you can use a blue laser pointer, and since it has a high enough frequency to get the transition to start, it works really well. So you can essentially draw uh, with a laser pointer on glow-in-the-dark material, and it activates it very, very well because uh, it's only that one color light that, that shifts it up, and then uh, it shifts back down and you get the light. So. It kind of stick, it, like it persists over time, fades really slowly. Yeah. I've seen I've seen these on big walls before. It's super cool. It's it fades as more and more of the yeah. electrons make that uh, that illegal transition, uh, the forbidden mm -hmm. transition, and then they eventually all do it, and then it's not glowing anymore. Excellent. All right. So I don't know how I don't know how do we put this into play then? Like these are these are interesting um, dissections of things that we've seen. How are people so dang creative to then take that and then go, here's how I'm going to make it so that I've got a haunted house that uses all these things? I mean, is it as easy as what you're saying right now? No. that's no. They, that's, <laughs> the execution is way more difficult. That's absolutely right. I mean, Pepper's Ghost is a great example. You can make that work, but you got to have it set up so it yeah. works. you got to have the, the the glass so it's hidden so they can't tell it's a piece of glass. you got to have the lighting in the right place. you got to put the people in the right place. And that's where the artistry of making these things comes into play. Right. And the same thing with the with the fog and stuff. you got to make it have the best effect. Just understanding how it works mm -hmm. uh, isn't enough. But it is fun. Yeah. So. So, uh, Rhett, are you dressed as a physics professor today? I am. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm, I'm the Hulk. <laughs> oh, now I get okay. it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but don't make me angry. Okay. All right, we will not. Uh, Rhett Ellen at uh, Wired.com. Thanks for coming on and, and destroying some of the science behind the illusion. We appreciate it. Yeah, anytime it. you need stuff destroyed, boom, I'm just going to do that. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you, Rhett. We appreciate you coming well, on tonight. Thanks for having me on.